And on today's episode of Beauty in the Bolt, I am so excited to say that I am joining so many other YouTubers on the Team Trees collaboration, where we are trying to plant 20 million trees by 2020. And you might be thinking, that's kind of weird for someone who has just picked up woodworking, because what you do is cut down trees. But for this project, I did a little bit of research on where that lumber is coming from, and I was kind of sad to find out just how bad the situation is in some areas. Each year, around 2.5 million acres of land is converted for use for fast wood forest. Eight to 10% of lumber is logged illegally. So logging obviously causes a bunch of damage to the tree that's actively being logged, but you'd be surprised at how much damage it causes the surrounding area. So there's this thing called selective logging and it's taking a massive toll on our rainforests. The selective logging of one mahogany tree destroys on average 28 surrounding trees and 3,000 square feet of land. Laws have been put in place to mitigate that, but up to 80% of mahogany logging right now is illegal. Another wood I've seen a lot of influencers use is zebra wood, and high zebra wood demand has led to its local extinction in many of its native regions. There's only two known places with zebra wood growing naturally right now, and it's Karoop National Park and Mokoko River Forest Reserve. And the population at Mokoko is being severely threatened due to illegal logging. When I buy my wood slabs, I buy them from a guy who does urban reclaimed logging, which means that he's going to other areas where trees are already going to be turned, torn down in urban spaces. But today, I'm gonna to check out Rebuilders Exchange, which is my local reclaim store right here in Cleveland, Ohio. Hello, I'm Jessica Davis, the owner of Rebuilders Exchange RBX. We're gonna talk about some good wood. Here we go. So this wood is from, look how beautiful this is. It's a variation sassafras, different kind. And if you look at this big pile, you're like, where did this come from? And if you look closer, you can see this round little hole in here. This was uh, used for a corduroy road. Hmm, what's a corduroy road, you ask? Well, a corduroy road is a bumpy road that it's like logs put together. So as you go over it, it's like corduroy pants. Oh, I know what people will love. This is good wood. Hello, here's some more wood, good wood. This is bleacher boards. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not. These can get stuck together because there's gum underneath them. This is from an old school that was over 100 years old and this was in the auditorium. The grain on it is going to be tighter than newer pine that you would find today. It has a story. I mean, think about how many kids cheered on their favorite team sitting on these seats. I'm gonna go get something that my grandfather made for me. What do you think about the Zyla as inspiration? Yeah, let's do it. Let's build it. Well, I'll build it. You'll, you'll find me wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's look through this little sweet pile. What do you think about this piece of wood? It was used as a really thick baseboard in an old house. Like, so imagine this. This little, this little thing is gonna be an amazing amazing planner toolbox. What, why are you passionate uh, about reclaiming and recycling versus everything being purchased new? Um, because of creativity. When you use, use things, you have to think about how it's going to work a little bit differently. Um, what do you think about a little piece of pipe? Sure. A little salvage pipe. Oh, see? This, what, what was this? A birdcage elevator. What? Yep. It's a single, it's a single seated elevator for, it was in a woman's home. I'm looking for some handle options. Do you like this one? Is that? It might be a little short. Too short? Yeah. Okay, Goldilocks picks out a handle. Here we go. How's this one? It's too short. <laughs> okay, we'll keep going. <laughs> this one? <laughs> uh, it has a lump on it. Okay, let's find the perfect one. What about this one? Oh, that one's not bad. This could be kind of cute. Yeah, this is what you want? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. Beep. Here's a gift. Thank you. Here comes, here comes the toolbox. How old do you think this piece of wood is? Like over a hundred years old. Imagine like what that wood has seen <laughs> in its life. Some dancing, I'm sure. These were from a school that was built in 1910. I mean, this is something that would easily, easily, easily go into the landfill. These are better quality than what you can buy for the same price today. All right, now that I've got my wood right there, it is time to head to the wood shop. Let's do this thing. 
Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make this a work wool piece of lumber and honestly just know what this piece of wood looks like. So I ran it through the planer and then the drum sander and then the joiner on its edges and that made it look like a piece of lumber I'm used to working with. Next, I took it over to the miter saw and trimmed off its rough end, then measured and cut out two 10 inch pieces. Those will be my side walls. Next, it was time to determine the profile shape of the toolbox itself. So I opted for a template method, so I measured out the square part that I wanted on the bottom and then divided the rest of it in half and cut out a piece of graph paper that was exactly that size and freehanded half of the shape that I wanted on it. Then I just cut out my shape and traced it on both sides so that I knew I had a symmetrical object. Next, I headed to the bandsaw to rough out that outline. And now I took that first curve pretty easy because I haven't cut a curve on the bandsaw in a while, but I felt like I got the hang of it and got a little closer on the second pass. Once I had that rough shape outlined, I just finished it off on the disc sander and then the spindle sander. I traced that for my second shape because now I have a real template and then repeated the whole process over again. So super fast mo, go! The two pieces were already pretty much identical, but I ran them together through the spindle sander and I think that really sealed it up. Alright, so now it's time to drill the hole for the handle. So I used a pair of calipers to determine the clearance hole size, which was 3 eighths of an inch, and then used the drill press to drill the hole in that exact spot I marked with my graph paper way at the beginning. Just to make sure that everything was on track, I test fit it and then measured the distance between the insides of both of those pieces. I had already done the math, but I just wanted to make sure. Then I headed over to the miter saw and measured out that distance and cut out two pieces, one for the base and then one for the sidewalls. And the one for the sidewalls, I'm gonna cut in half. Another test fit of the base, just to make sure that everything is fitting nice and snugly. And then I measured out a rip cut for the sidewalls because I only had that much left of my wood, so I had to make it last. Now, I definitely would have preferred to do this on the table saw, but this was a public wood shop and someone had walked off with the table saw's safety key, so I settled for the bandsaw. And honestly, it worked out fine. Next up was the dreaded part of literally every wood project I've ever done. <sighs> Sanding. So, I took the orbital sander to every single piece of this and I used it to round off the corners a little bit. Um, I didn't want to go to the table router for some reason. Um, but I, I actually really like the slightly unevenness that the orbital sander provided. So I just sanded down the pieces of wood, and I'm still sanding, and this is at 5,000%. That's how much sanding this takes. Alright, you get the idea. You sand it, let's just move on. And just like that, it's time for final assembly. We're almost there, you guys. Alright, so I used a combination of wood glue and finishing nails. Um, so here I'm gluing up the base and then clamping it. So I glued it, clamped it, let the glue dry a little bit, and then went in with a pneumatic nail gun to add some finishing nails for that final structure. And this was nice because I knew I only had one day, so I had to pick a method that um, allowed me to walk out of here and edit this video tonight. So um, I would have loved to do dowels or dominoes or something a little bit you know, fancier, but this worked out just fine. You ready for the most satisfying part of every wood project? It's time to add some finish. Ugh, look how nice it goes on. So I opted for the speed and wax because I want a time crunch and I did not have time for any other kind of finish to set, but honestly, it looks so beautiful. It brought out the grain of the wood really nicely and the, the light color. Usually I don't like light color woods, but I think that this, this wax really brought it out. So I'm really glad I went with it. Ah, it's so nice. All right, let's look at it done. All right, beauty shot time. Isn't she so pretty? So everything, everything on here is reclaimed, um, except for the wing nuts, because I got a little bit desperate with the time crunch. But the total build time of this video was about three hours, give or take. 
Um, and a lot of that was me just running around saying hi to friends that were at this community wood shop. And I would like to point out that, yes, I used a lot of really expensive high-end machines, but they weren't mine. I went and I found a makerspace that was open. So feel free to check out beautyinthebolt.com slash makerspaces. I'll link that down in the description below to find a makerspace near you where you can also use all kinds of fun jazz like that. It really is not a difficult project, but I'm really happy with the way it turned out. In full admittance, it is now 11.30 p.m. on October 24th, and this video is going live on October 25th. So if I had more time, I probably would have done dominoes or dowels or something instead of having these finishing nails show. But I kind of like it because there's already nail strikes in this wood because it's reclaimed. So, you know, everything works out in the end. As I said at the beginning of this video, all of this is in order to raise awareness for the Arbor Day Foundation and to send you to teamtrees.org to donate because for every dollar donated, the Arbor Day Foundation will plant a tree. And as woodworkers, I think it's really important that we think about the environmental impact of our craft. And I know we can't all give it up, but we can at least try to help offset a little bit of what we do. So with that, please use ethically sourced wood that's actually ethically sourced and visit the Arbor Day Foundation website. And like and subscribe. Thanks, yeah, do this. Anyway, it's time for me to edit this thing so that you can watch it in 12 hours, yay!